or lambda expressions. Other than link, what are they good for? If you haven't caught on yet, I'm inching my way towards link. And by the time I get to it, I'll probably have about five or ten minutes of presentation, just like the other presentations I've done. My goal is to give you just enough to get your job done without all the whys and wherefores you get from all the other presentations. That is, I'm not going to give you an hour presentation on link when five or ten minutes will get to do the trick. If you want that much detail, there's several other presentations available on the web that will fill that gap. My goal is to get you going. So the next step in the link puzzle is lambda expressions. And to understand lambda expressions, you first need to understand their little brother, anonymous methods. Now, all an anonymous method is, is a really simple way of creating a delegate. So if you know delegates, you're almost halfway there with the anonymous method. If all I really need is a function that's going to loop through an array, it's a whole lot easier to set up an array and use it in the anonymous method than it is to try to pass that array to a delegate before I can actually start using it. Uh, this is probably easier to illustrate in code, so here's an example. In C Sharp, if I set up an array of integers and then fill them in, and this is just a really simple illustration here, I can go in here and create, say I want to pass this into a thread, so it's running a thread. I can do something like this. I can do var thread start equals system threading thread start and here's where the magic comes in. I can do delegate pass my parameters if there are any open and close and curly brace closing print closing semicolon that that stubs out our call and now what I can do is I can put my for each statement in here for each int i in i array. Now I can call some function foo that takes an integer as a parameter inside my loop. Now you'll notice a couple things here. First thing is I've created my array in my function here and I'm actually using it in the delegate. I don't have to pass that array into the delegate. Now if I weren't using an anonymous method like this, I would have to actually pass that array to the delegate before I could start using it, or I would have to make that an array uh, a member variable of my class that my delegate was a part of. Uh, this is much easier to use, and I think even uh, the guys that complain about you know, anonymous methods uh, making the code unreadable, uh, this compared to using uh, an anonymous or a regular uh, delegate to pass the arrays and, and do the uh, threading, which I've actually done in some older code, uh, this is a lot more readable. Uh, you just you can't make any argument. Matter of fact, the other way is so unreadable, I'm not even going to show a demo of it. Now, you might ask, well, how do I do that same type of thing in VB.net? Yeah, don't. So let's take this to the next level. How is this related to lambda expressions? Very simple. You replace a delegate here. With the lambda symbol. And you're all done. That makes it really easy. This is where any parameters that you're going to pass into the anonymous method go. This takes the place of delegate. They swapped them around. Looks a little bit like Lisp. All right, but it works. So VB.NET does have Lambda expressions, but in my opinion, they aren't as rich. Uh, the VB.NET documentation actually states Lambda expressions is a function without a name that evaluates a single expression and returns its value. The key here is single expression. I'm not going to be able to do a multi-line expression like I can do in C Sharp. So let's move over to our VB code and set up a simple delegate thing. I'm going to basically that erase not for this demo. We're just going to move on to DMI. <clears throat> and 
equals, and I already have a foo function set up that takes an integer as a parameter. Function is the key word for lambda expressions in uh, VB. What we're saying here is our lambda expression takes an integer as a parameter. And I probably have, yeah, there we go, I have it spelled wrong. Integer. The function that I'm actually going to use is going to take that parameter and add 23 to it. That declares our lambda expression and now we're going to pass 6 into our lambda expression and the result closing out to our foo. So foo down here is going to get 6 plus 23 which would be 29 and it's going to return 29 back out to our real simple uh, demo of the lambda expression in VB. If you wanted to break this out in uh, little bite-sized pieces, what we actually have is we have a lambda expression function n as integer n plus 23. That's our lambda expression. If you wanted to assign it to a variable you could. So there you go. x equals function there's 23. Now we can call x as though it were a function, just like you could do with a delicate in C-sharp. And if we wanted to pass that into our foo function, you could do it here. All we did up here on this line is we skipped the part where we create the variable and we just passed it right into the function. So given the choice, I think I'd rather use lambda expressions in C-sharp than I would in VB.net. But if you're stuck in VB.net, uh, you can do a little bit with the lambda expressions. The real power, of course, of lambda expressions is uh, that they are actually uh, used under the hood uh, when you start using link.